Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamers. Say, that Return of the Living Dead may not look like a very smart movie, but it's got a lot of brains. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Funkoverse, Universal Monsters from Funko Games. Darn it. Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. In Funkoverse, Universal Monsters from Funko Games, two to four players take on the roles of the iconic Universal Horror Monsters as they attempt to do battle in all sorts of kooky locations. Now, players can take on the role of the creature, Dracula, the Invisible Man, or the Bride of Frankenstein as they attempt to pound each other and knock each other out. Now, there's some other characters you can also play for a bigger game, uh, but you just use tokens to represent those characters as well. Now, a typical game is going to be in teams. You're going to have two different teams here. Each team is going to have their own cooldown track. You're going to take cards for each of your characters as well as specific tokens that match their abilities. Now, typically on your turn, you can choose a character who has not been exhausted and take actions. You can move. Generally, you can move up to two squares with a character. If a, another one of your characters has fallen down, you can assist them by helping them back up. You can also interact with special items around the board uh, as well. Now, some characters will have special abilities. You can go ahead and activate those special abilities, and as I say, sometimes that will require you to place a token on a cooldown track in order to you for you to be able to do that again eventually. But one of the basic things you're going to do here is challenge. Now, when you challenge, you're going to roll two die. This is essentially an attack to an adjacent monster. Now, if you get a burst, that's a success. If you get the three exclamation points, that's three successes. Now, your opponent, when they roll a shield, that's one defense. If they roll three... Um, Exclamation points, that is essentially three defenses. You're trying to roll more, uh, get more successes than your opponent in order to knock them down. Now, if a character is already knocked down and someone comes along and challenges them, you can go ahead and you roll again. If they are loose, then they are knocked out. They're essentially they're removed from the game. They'll be able to come back in, but uh, that's obviously going to uh, be a big negative for you to have your character actually removed from the game. Now you're playing through specific scenarios, and as you are playing through these scenarios, you are moving around, you are challenging your opponents, you are knocking them uh, down, you are knocking them out, you are using your special abilities, you are gaining points through interaction with items, you're, like I say, constantly engaging one another, and whoever can fulfill the specific scenario objectives first wins! Funkoverse Universal Monsters so Funkoverse Universal Monsters is a very, very light game. This is a brawler um, where you're, you're moving your, your characters around, you're fighting, you're attempting to, to, to reach those objectives of the scenario. Now, the game itself, frankly, there's not a lot of meat here uh, for kind of a, a heavier gamer. Um, this is light fun, and really one of the big selling points here are the the Funko characters. They're, they're really cool. They are really, really cool, and it's kind of fun to play with them on the board and knock them over. Um, they're, they're fun to play with. Um, I th I, but I, I think that's the primary selling point here. Uh, so consequently, I think maybe this is a game for people maybe newer to gaming or, you know, kind of as a, a kind of a gateway game into kind of this kind of brawler kind of game. Or young people, I think, will really get a kick out of it because there's a real toy factor with those, um, with those um, uh, 
figures. So um, the game itself is a game I thought was just okay. However, the experience is, is, is like I say, pretty fun because of the toy factor. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say try it before you buy it. I think this game is much more suited, I think, to younger players or people kind of new to the hobby looking get, to get into kind of a, a brawler type game. Try it before you buy it. That's my recommendation. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out, please subscribe, and we'd ask you to please give a thumb to this video on BoardGameGeek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, I've got to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really afraid for my calendar. Its days are numbered. The cardboard game now is sturdier, sturdy like a big sturdy girl with good sturdy blood. You know, let's not talk about that. I, um, there's a lawsuit pending right now. But the point is, you know, it is very big and the big figurines, they're not so many anymore. They're big like that. Oh boy.